Good morning, uh, Mr. Stoltenberg. Thank you so much for your coming. It is a very great honor for us and great help. And we feel now that we are not alone. Uh, we're working uh, also um, and hope that and hope that Ukraine in Ukraine the war will be over soon. Please say something to yeah. the press. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Alexander Hildebrandt. It's really uh, a great uh, pleasure and honor uh, maybe I say, for me to be here uh, with you. And thank you for showing me around in this uh, museum. Uh, what you do here is extremely important. Uh, this museum is a landmark for freedom, a landmark for everyone who believes in, uh, in democracy, in freedom over oppression and autocracy. And uh, uh, that is important because we need to remember what happened at the Checkpoint Charlie. We need to remember um, how divided Europe was uh, with the wall uh, during the Cold War. But we also need to remember it because we see that uh, tyranny and oppression is coming back. Uh, we see that uh, in Ukraine uh, with the brutal uh, war of aggression by President uh, Putin and therefore it is um, the same message that this museum has conveyed for decades that the NATO uh, is now conveying when we are uh, supporting Ukraine in the right to defend their uh, sovereignty, their uh, uh, territorial integrity, but not least uh, the freedom and the democracy of the Ukrainians. So there is a, a long line from uh, when you and your husband established this museum just after the wall uh, came up and the work of NATO and NATO allies uh, today. And as we discussed, uh, NATO played an important role, a critical role during the Cold War, helped to bring this wall down uh, and now we are uh, doing uh, all we can to prevent new walls uh, to be rebuilt uh, in, uh, in Europe. This is my first visit to this museum. Um, and I'm really grateful for you inviting me and for showing me around. But this is not my first time at Checkpoint Charlie. Because as, uh, as a quite young boy or man, I, I went with my father and my sister uh, to uh, Berlin in the, the summer of 1972. And then we crossed from uh, West Berlin into uh, East Berlin and we crossed here at Checkpoint Charlie. And I remember it was, you know, going from the freedom, the open uh, society of West Berlin to uh, the darkness in East Berlin uh, and the feeling of really crossing from one world to another world. And then we stayed for a few days in East Berlin and then we crossed back. Of course, that was possible for us because we had the Norwegian passports, we had all the papers, but we also then knew that the people we left in, in East Berlin, they were not able to uh, leave. Uh, the only way to leave was to risk their lives and to try to get out um, uh, crossing the border, but knowing that the guards were actually after them all the time. So thank you so much for um, keeping this museum, for keeping this landmark for freedom, and uh, thank you so much for showing me around today. Thank Mr. you. Stoltenberg, maybe just one question if you yeah. allow. Um, you mentioned uh, the right of Ukraine to defend itself. When you look at Germany and, and maybe if Germany can do more in terms of weapons uh, delivery, would you expect Germany to do more, for example, send combat tanks to Ukraine? Germany is doing a lot to provide support uh, to Ukraine. Um, uh, Germany is providing uh, substantial military support, uh, financial support, humanitarian support, and actually Germany is among those allies that are uh, providing the most uh, support. I will meet with Charles uh, Scholz later today, uh, and of course we will then uh, uh, discuss how to make sure that NATO allies uh, sustain their support for uh, Ukraine, including with uh, air defenses, uh, which is extremely important now. Uh, but I would like to commend Germany for uh, the support to Ukraine, uh, but also for the fact that Germany has stepped up its efforts uh, in defending NATO territory and NATO allies. Um, the Seitenwende, the, the, the 100 billion extra for defense, uh, is a very clear and strong message uh, from Chancellor Scholz from Germany. Uh, and we need that because uh, NATO is now stepping up, increasing our presence, uh, especially in the eastern part of the alliance, uh, to prevent escalation of the war uh, uh, beyond Ukraine and to make sure that uh, all allies are safe in a more dangerous world. Thank you very much. Yeah.
Okay. 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 Uh, in 61, Western Malays and uh, the Soviet army were on the brink of a direct confrontation here just around the corner. What do you think? Is there a, a similar risk, a risk possible now? We don't see any indications of any uh, uh, imminent uh, direct military threat against any NATO ally. Uh, and that's because uh, uh, we have uh, a NATO. Uh, uh, sending a very clear uh, message of uh, that we are ready, uh, we are present, and we are ready to defend every inch of NATO territory. Based on NATO's core principle, uh, an attack on one ally will trigger a response from uh, the whole alliance, one for all, or uh, all for one. And uh, the fact that we have increased our presence, not least in the eastern part of the alliance, um, uh, sends this clear message to uh, Moscow. So we don't see any imminent threat against any NATO ally. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much.